Hi everyone, so the grind in season 24 is in full force for most people and I do get a lot of questions about the god demon hunter, the ethereals, what powers to choose and all that kind of stuff and I thought it would be best to just make another FAQ video this time for the demon hunter. So let's talk about the most interesting topic first, the ethereals. So the demon hunter actually got the best ethereal out of all ethereals in the entire game which is the Buriza do Kianon. This is roughly a 10 to 11 tiers boost, it has this freeze effect, it has extra damage, it has massive damage per shot and it's just insanely well suited for this god demon hunter build in every single way. So this is just a massive weapon and nothing can really come close to this in terms of ethereals. All other builds in the game get also very sizable buffs of somewhere between like 5, 6, 7 tiers but Goldie Age definitely has it the best here. But it is also quite needed to kind of bring it up to uh, the same level as some other top builds like the Firebirds etc. So in fact it is uh, a very competitive solo build but not the best. So in terms of pushing for example you can do 150 but Demon does actually the last class in terms of like minimum Paragon requirement to do it. So I think that around 5k Paragons, a super hard push, you could probably fish for 150s at some point, if you're like a godly player, literally. So it is definitely not really easy, and most people will probably cap out somewhere like 140 or slightly above, depending on the Paragons, if you really try hard to fish with lower Paragons. So in any case, this Bereza is extremely powerful, and the best part about it is you don't have to worry about any breakpoints whatsoever this season. Any combination of attack speed rolls on your Burritza with any combination of attack speed rolls on your 9 series Satchel and the Paragons, you will get exactly the right breakpoints. If you get any other attack speed rolls on your gear, you will most likely go over the, the required breakpoint of 9 frames, which is 1.50 to 1.66 attacks per second in your character sheet. So you have to check your number here, and if it's uh, outside of that range, especially if it's higher, you're gonna have some issues because you will be on the wrong breakpoint and you will decrease your DPS massively. So don't do this. Make sure that you avoid any other sources of attack speed. Exactly this is also the reason why, for example, on your Bariza, you don't want Echoing Fury at all on the, on the weapon. So Bariza is the number one weapon that you will take basically no matter what as soon as you have the first one and any power on it is fine because Gold Age doesn't really require much. You need a Quiver, and then you need a dawn and then the second weapon option is almost whatever but you want to avoid the Echoing Fury and then there are some options that are actually good so one would be the Fortress Ballista that you can use in farming especially then there is the Valus Bequest which is the kind of easy mode uh, push weapon usually and then there's the Odyssey's End which is the meta like push weapon for those that really want to invest into a high tier push you can get like up to two tiers or so out of this weapon. But none of these are actually required to get the build going. You just need your set, you need a quiver, and you need a Buriza and you're already blasting. And then you can add some other stuff like Wraps of Clarity and uh, Hunter's Wrath and all these kind of things. So if you're setting up your character, it's very easy. The problem with this Echoing Fury weapon here is that it increases your attack speed over the best breakpoint for strafe. So you actually spend a lot more hatred on strafe but you don't actually get more generators, in fact you get less generators. So it kind of works against you in two ways. It decreases your hatred and it decreases your DPS. And you don't really gain much of benefit. So when you have this and you have no other Bereza to replace this, then what you should do is you take the Night Stalker or the Blood Vengeance Passives to deal with the resource issues until you get the next Bereza to equip. Generally useful good passives to get on your ethereal items are uh, Tactic Advantage, Ambush is used in pretty much any DPS build, Cal the Weak is very often used outside of T16 in Greater Rifts, and there's also some other things like Archery is okay, Awareness is pretty good, Tactic Advantage, so there's quite a lot of like kind of utility and survival s skills that are also quite powerful. I also get a lot of questions about whether you know, can stack certain legendary powers, for example a lot of people seem to get like the Nime Series Satchel on their Buriza, the answer is no. If you get the quiver power on your weapon, then yeah, effectively the quiver in the offense is useless and you can just take any quiver that has good stats until again you replace your breeder with a better one. I'm not exactly sure which legendary power actually takes precedence 
with the S uh, kind of like you know which one is taken. Uh, apparently, there are some situations where people have found a dawn and it had a really low roll. It goes from 50 to 65 percent on dawn, and it had a one cubed and one on the breezer, and it actually preferred the equipped one with the low roll. So it is not necessarily given that this always takes the right one here. But you, of course you want to make sure that you avoid this anyway. Now about the Burritza, there's also a lot of questions with this freeze effect and whether people should roll off crit chance because it has this effect that all hits are critical hits against frozen enemies and you also have a sizable amount of freeze chance on this weapon. The answer is not really. So there are some especially 4 man speed setups, especially with Z Necro where it's essentially like rat runs, you freeze everything around you and you pull stuff together. And in those cases, you can argue that, okay, this kind of makes sense. You can essentially fight most enemies while they're frozen. And then there's like juggernauts where, um, yeah, this doesn't work. The thing is that there's not really many stats to really replace this with anything useful with. Brazers has nothing, just defense. Same with the helm. Then there's the amulet where, okay, you could get something like more dexterity. Not really powerful, especially later on. Uh, then again, on the gloves, yeah, maybe, but it always so... It's really difficult to get such a glove because it always comes with crit chance and it's also a high roll. So the only slots that really are left are the rings that you might want to roll off the, the crit chance from when you do these runs where you constantly freeze stuff. But this, this is almost about it. Again, the best thing to get would be something like this here. So damage range, crit damage and area damage. But again, in speedruns, for example, area damage is not exactly very powerful unless you have someone grouping stuff for you, which might or might not happen in, in your groups. In solo speedruns, area damage is not extremely a valuable stat. So all this like, extra crit for extra damage, not really good. And the same with the damage range. Burisa is already a weapon that goes beyond like four and a half thousand DPS anyway. So adding like another you know hundred damage or two hundred or something is not exactly the best option. So what's definitely important on your items is that you hit the cooldown requirements. So this is 37% when you have a 65% dawn, which usually means paragons, diamond in the helm, and then three other items. So usually the shoulders, which is um, kind of for free. And then you have like, you know, maybe the glove, maybe the quiver, maybe a ring. If your dawn is really crappy, then you can add like up to another roll if you have like a 60% dawn or something. If you have a worse power than this, then you really have to invest a lot of cooldown, but you should try to close dimensions gap just to make sure. So in general, it's actually looking really good for Demon Hunters this season. I imagine this 4-man speed meta is uh, hilariously strong. I hear about people like, running beyond GR 120 in groups in, in like one and a half minutes. Essentially, red runs just a few tiers higher. So uh, pretty amazing stuff. And the Breezer is definitely something to have a lot of fun with for the God the Age for this one season here. For now, this is what I have to share. So that I hope that I could clear up some things if you are playing Demon Hunter yourself. And if you have any other questions, then don't hesitate to just throw them here or on my Twitch and just come there. I'm streaming every day right now for like 15, 16 hours. So I'll be around. So I hope you like this video here and I'll see you guys next time.